E. coli became an important pathogen. And the list of, of naturally occurring uh, emerging diseases is about 30 or even more different agents. So nature is very good in creating new biological beasts so that people probably can do the same. So what kind of biological agents can we suggest or how could it be done? First of all, it's a simple classical technique, gene modification and transfer. And the easiest task is to create multiple antibiotic resistant bacteria. And you can imagine what would happen if uh, anthrax in recent attacks was antibiotic resistant. There would be no cure and thousands of postal workers would simply die. Vaccine resistance sometimes sounded like something um, impossible to achieve. But surprisingly, some open literature we've talked, we'll talk about showed that in this direction there was a considerable success. Although it was very difficult to create vaccine-resistant smallpox, and protection against smallpox with, with vaccine, although limited, but still uh, seemed to be a very good idea. Toxins were considered as a very good complement to natural virulence factors, and uh, some strains of different bacteria with expressing toxins have been successfully created. We can go further and we can employ much more sophisticated ideas like autoimmune diseases, which essentially means that the bacteria or virus may serve as a trigger, as a switch to turn immune response against the body, but not against the microbe. Another uh, early idea is so-called bioregulators, which may include cytokines, different mediators of, of uh, septic shock, uh, anaphylactic excuse me, shock reaction, and neuropeptides. It's, uh, neuropeptides is, is a simple concept. You know, if something, if our mental and uh, other activities, you know, are controlled by peptides, what if the microbe would do it? There's uh, little consequences. And uh, what if the microbe produce neuropeptides which may change human behavior, perception of reality, and many, many other things? One more approach a complete chemical synthesis. I'm, I'm confident nobody of you even heard about the possibility to create <coughs> viruses from, as we say, carbon, air, and water. But it's possible. And it's complete, block by block, molecule by molecule, assembly of, of viral DNA. And it could be done in, say, in 1980. Uh, several viruses have been blueprinted, and they were of HIV size or SV40 size, which is about several thousand nucleotides long. And it would take only a couple of years for my department to assemble each of them. But right now, the capacity is much bigger. And automated chemical synthesis is a routine approach. So that if, it's, if you think about artificial viruses, you can think about something like prions, the agents causing so-called small, uh, uh, slow infections. And those are so small that almost everybody with a PhD degree can can produce those in artificial conditions. And I'm just surprised and I'm really concerned that this 
have already been done by somebody. Uh, back in the 80s, uh, other small pathogens have been considered as potential pathogens taken into account by roids. Small pieces of RNA being spread over uh, plants cause a lot of damage, agricultural damage. And you know what, you can imagine what could happen in case of uh, not only, you know, uh, pathogens um, killing humans, but pathogens for livestock and uh, agricultural plants. Another approach, manipulation with whole genomes. We don't need even to, uh, to know what's inside. You just try, we can try to combine viruses and bacteria. And that kind of disease would be absolutely difficult to recognize and to deal with. And I'll give you later an example of such a disease. We can combine different viruses in one. And that was the subject of a special program called Bonfire. And uh, some people, I've got a lot of enemies talking about it because nobody in Russia wants even to think about it. And of course they, they don't acknowledge the existence of the program. One more slide on hypothetical possibilities. And that's, this time it's not what I dealt with. It's what's been taken from the literature, but not from scientific fiction from real solid scientific publications. Stealth viruses introduced into human genome, which could be turned on and off, depending on the particular conditions or the will of the person who did it. Double-stranded RNA interference, essentially the same approach where certain genes, certain very important parts of DNA could be turned on and off. And that, that is a very uh, scary possibility, although hypothetical at the moment. So what, what worries me a, little, a lot when I read and think about the directions of future research regarding new biological agents, is that every day we have so many possibilities to create something new and deadlier than before. Look at the approach called direct molecular evolution. That's a perfect way to create new viruses just by recombining different pieces. And it's a very uh, uh, kind of uh, fashionable approach right now. Almost everybody recombines everything beginning from uh, chemical compounds and uh, uh, including DNA. Minimal microbial genome, very innocuous program. But when I look at this from my point of view, I see that is what, you know, the Soviet program would certainly be very glad to use. So it, it, it essentially defines building blocks for new pathogens. What could function and how could function independently on in different combinations. So uh, briefly about the program itself and some facts which are known or what I suggest have been done. The, the program itself began a long, long time ago. That's why it is uh, kind of troublesome. 20, uh, more than 26 years ago, uh, the, the program began with 